Man, I love that. Towards the end of that, I feel like I should be conducting an orchestra or something like that. It's it is sort of fun going mixing that that rock with the the or- orchestra and things like that. Um, anyways, it's kind of fun. Hey, it's Wednesday night. Uh, happy uh, Thanksgiving Eve. That yeah, there we go. Um, it's uh, for those that celebrate it. Uh, those that are that are uh, in in the U.S. For those that are not, happy Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, it is time for another episode of Minor League Fights and Insights. Uh, we're here to have a fun, good time um, and just sort of talk uh, about the, the minor league. Uh, right now, we are in week se- heading into week seven. I believe the games are on Friday night that, uh, this week. Um, here we come. Uh, two more games left. Um, so before before we know for sure who's going to be in the playoffs, and then, then you've got the semifinals. And then we've got the big championship on uh, December 16th, which should be an absolute blast. Uh, anyways, this is episode eight. We've done eight of these so far. Um, actually, we missed one of them, but I never stopped counting. So we've done seven of them. We say eight. So uh, that's all right. Uh, anyways, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, for those that are live here uh, and, and uh, that are watching the recording, uh, we'll be getting to some uh, extra special uh, announcements and things like that a little bit later. But first... Let's jump over to see who is on our panel tonight. So tonight we have, as always, as he says to me, I live here. Uh, this is Daniel Wright coming from uh, Minor League Fights and Insights, his bedroom, pretty much. Pretty much. And guys, if you don't want turkey for your Thanksgiving, you can always mail it up here to Canada. I'll appreciate all and all turkey you can give me. I'll eat it. I'll enjoy it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just, I wonder how that ships. I'm not sure. Um, my wife does... Uh, Hello Fresh, and they, they there's lots of ice in there to keep everything. I don't know. Anyways, that's that. If anybody knows that, <laughs> I'm curious, I guess. Uh, and Nicholas, Nicholas Frossel, thank you for joining us again uh, tonight. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You are I, becoming... I will not be shipping any turkey in the mail. <laughs> Good. <laughs> what was it? There was a. Uh... Uh, anyways, if, I don't know if any if anybody's a fan of UK panel shows or other things. There's a, a show called Taskmaster. One was. Uh, talking about getting a a raw uncooked chicken being shipped to them every every year for Thanksgiving. Anyways, odd. I don't know how that would work, but anyways, that that's that we'll talk about that some other time. I don't know. Um, but anyways, we have uh, a great show for you tonight. First up, we have a special interview with uh, a a minor league player. Uh, he's on the Madison Lynx. Uh, he's coming uh, and, and joining us here. Uh, so on the line, we've got DJ Woods, who's the inside linebacker for the Lynx. Good evening, DJ. Yo, I made it. He did. Excellent. <laughs> Great to hear your voice. And my Georgia, Three I finally came. Did, you, did you get your Taco Bell? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, anyways, thanks for joining us tonight, DJ. It's been an honor. Good, good. Uh, so I want to know a little bit, who is DJ Woods? Is that your name? Is that who you are? Who's the person behind the player? Well, um, yes, DJ Woods is is my name. I've Some might have and heard about you. I, it's a myth. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a doctor myth. You can, um, you can ask Chris Wonder where the doctor came from. Okay. <laughs> I'll do that. But um, I've actually played middle school football as a uh, defensive tackle. Okay. And um, when I had lost some SS weight, I felt like I was mobile enough to be linebacker. Mm-hmm. So that's why I had um, chose that position. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I knowing you know the places that you can go. Uh, and, and the SFL trying to be true to life, you know, you can go from defensive lineman to linebacker, but typically, you know, there's a 40 or 50 pound weight difference oftentimes between them. Right. Right. Well, how's, how's it been going for you? Do you enjoying uh, that position? Uh, and, and maybe why did you choose inside linebacker versus maybe outside linebacker? Curious. Well, I always want to do like middle linebacker. Since um, inside and middle can, like, be interchangeable. Sure. Yep. So, yeah, I guess I kind of want to be, like, the quarterback of the defense. That's what they always nickname us. Yeah. Very cool. 
Uh, so tell us, how did you find the league uh, and, and what has been your experience been like so far? Well, it was like, um, they have archived, um, they had just finished week nine and I was watching one of the uh, archived games. And I and they had got my entrance. So then I had uh, waited around week 10, caught my first live game. It was Mexico City versus Atlanta. And I was just blown away by Atlanta's defense. So then I just felt like I just want to join in. And when I heard that you can, I, I, that's when I had hopped in the uh, Discord server. Very cool. And as the saying goes, the rest is history. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, so that's let's see, week nine, the minor league has it hadn't had uh, really started yet, right? You it was before week one that you joined, yeah. is that right? Okay, so you had a couple weeks before the the start of the season. What is it like in the Madison locker room? Uh, I'm curious, you know, your teammates, that kind of thing. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> They're all funny. Oh, good. <laughs> Especially uh, Switch. Uh, Prince. <laughs> That's funny. That's good. But very, very supportive, I assume. And, and uh, mm-hmm. you, know, you guys have been having a really good uh, season so far this year. How has that been feeling, being out there on the on the field, seeing your player out there, um, seeing the team itself uh, succeeding? It feels so good. <laughs> good. That is good to hear. Um, let me see. It, wondering if you, if there are certain traits, if you think about like the team, a uh, pro protein that you eventually maybe want to be on, um, you know, not any specific name or anything, but like, what are characteristics of a team that you'd like to be drafted by or be beyond, uh, uh, come the future, right? Okay. Okay. Y'all bear with me. This is sure. kind of hard to explain. No worries. We're here for it. So. Okay. So like. I'm not sure what you kind of call these teams, but it's basically like they were dominant like back then. And then we like compared those numbers to nowadays. You just kind of ask yourself like what happened. Mm -hmm. So like, I kind of want to like be on one of those teams that's like return to that nostalgic dominant force that they once were. Sure. So it's so a team that that has seen, you know, a lot of success in the past, you know, uh-huh. and, and has now recently been like we, like needing a reboot. Right. Uh, Something like that. Yes. Cool. OK, that's pretty cool. I like well, honestly. I don't, but if they need a linebacker, <laughs> you can know who to call. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's really cool. That's noble of you. The like the idea of being part of like re, a rebuilding, like like being part of something, you know, trying to get get it back to where it once was, right? I think that's a, a very cool uh, aspect, you know, to to uh, inspire to. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daniel, do you have any questions for DJ? Well, first off, DJ, how are you doing? Hope everything's going well. Uh, I think we all aspire for that rebuild when we first get into the league. It's very nice, very noble. I, I know I tried to do it in Tulsa a whole bunch, and we actually got to the playoffs with it. It's very good. Uh, DJ, I'm not going to say ask you too many questions. I'm just going to... Let you have the floor kind of speak, because we have owners here. Uh, new minority owner, actually. Mr. Raccoon is actually in the chat right now for Vancouver. So go ahead and speak your case of why people should draft you. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Oh, yeah, just just speak your mind and say how uh, why people should draft you for this next season. Well, I am pretty humble and... Uh... And like I said, if you need a linebacker, you know who to call. And the reason to draft me is that I can offer. Um, I'm very teachable. Awesome. That's that's huge. You know, like you said, I feel like that pairs well with being humble too. The idea of like. I mean, the, the first thing that you need to know is that you don't know everything, right? That's, you know, uh, exactly. and, and being open to, you know, guidance and 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 knowing that you don't know everything and, and uh, things is, is a great attitude to have, especially, you know, starting out. So that is very cool. Yeah, especially if it's a rivalry game. <laughs> 
I, I, I love rivalry games. I'm just going to say it with my chest out. No pun intended, Eddie, if you're watching. <laughs> Very cool. It sounds like you've yeah. been you're bought, you've bought into some of that that uh, beehive uh, or swarm uh, <laughs> scorpion <laughs> uh, rivalry a little bit. If you, uh, <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I'm sure you've got some some uh, advocates and and uh, uh, competitors both watching right now. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, Nicholas, do you have any questions for for DJ at all? Uh, no specific questions, but Axel, this could be a good marketing opportunity if you drafted him. You could be, you know, number fifty-five, the myth, the legend. <laughs> oh so, my God, no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, curious, uh, DJ. How did you get? So I'll talk to Prince Wonder about the doctor thing. But where did the the myth come from? Is there a story behind that at all? Well, actually, that was my Twitch name. Hmm. Yeah, I used well, I was trying to stream Wizard One on One and cool. But however, the reason why I chose the myth was that I like I like for the offense to like underestimate me. You know. <laughs> yeah. I'm a myth. You don't believe I exist. Yep. And then and then eh, can't speak today. Yeah, the, and then the, when the, you the, see me, oh, I was gonna say that the story of of DJ Woods precedes him, uh, pre prior to games. <laughs> Very cool. I I want to turn it over to you, DJ. Do you have any questions for us, or or any any last words that you'd like to share? Are y'all ready to links up Friday? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Let's see. Who are you playing? I have it here. <laughs> Uh, Lexington uh, is coming uh, to yeah, Lexington. So that should be, they are on a hot streak, at least from last. They have, they were very cold, and then they went pretty hot um, this last week. So uh, I'm, I'll be curious to see how things turn out. Uh, you guys have a lot to defend um, up there in, in uh, Madison, so I'm excited to see that. Um, well, good. Uh, just, thanks for Just don't forget to page Dr. Myth, please. <laughs> there you go. Dr. Myth, colleague Dr. Myth. All right. Well, thank you so much, DJ, for, for coming on and talking with us for a little bit. Gracias. All right. Have a good night. You too. Thanks. All right. That's always nice to, to be able to talk with, with players, get to know who they are a little bit behind the scenes and, and things, get to know their personality a bit. And uh, it's very enjoyable. Uh, but we talked a little bit about Lexington, but we'll start with game one from last week. We'll, we'll jump into uh, what happened last was it Thursday or was it Thursday that games? Well, wow, okay. So yeah, it was a while ago. I guess that extra yeah, day. It was feels. Thursday. <laughs> uh, so game one, we saw San Jose flight come into Lincoln. You know, I don't know. San Jose was able to pull it off. Um, curious, uh, Daniel, tell us a little bit about what you see from this game. Well, I think I joked about it a bit before we went downstream, but I have no idea how San Jose won this game. Like, every stat possible is leading towards a Lincoln win. 405 total yards versus 258. 126 rushing yards. Uh, five more minutes time on attack. Like, it's, it's insane to me and mind-boggling that Lincoln lost this game, but I give, gotta give San Jose credit for actually winning a game that all stats lead towards them losing. Mm -hmm. Nicholas, any thoughts on, on this, this game for you? Yeah, I mean, same thing. It was a it was a tough fight. Um, Lincoln kind of came swinging. They they did what they should have done, which was kind of hold Bacon down a little bit, um, which is kind of what you have to do because you know their their quarterback uh, Blanco is you know he's fresh. He's been playing really well. He's been been playing very efficient, but you don't see him with like the three hundred yard game. So mm -hmm. so I think holding down Bacon was pretty key, and they did that. I mean, they they just barely lost. So so it's. I don't see it as a negative for Lincoln, really. Yeah, and, and we'll get to this later. I, I put together, you know, pulled the the new stats. You know, last week we had this new graphic that that ranked the different uh, offenses and defenses. Uh, so I've got that the new one for this week with showing which ones increased and which ones decreased. But um, yeah, I mean, I think yeah, like you said, Lincoln shouldn't hang their head necessarily. Again, it was an it went for an L, but there was progress being shown in that game at least. And and San Jose, like you said, you. You know, 
on offense, you know, the kind of team that you are and, and you know, the that kind of thing. But uh, so I think that's, that's solid too, that San Jose is, has claimed that identity of sort of who they are, I think too, and, and are trying to play f- towards their strengths, right? Yeah, the only thing I noticed too, which was kind of weird, I don't know, I'd have to look up his whole stats, I don't have it up right now, but but Logan Lee, I feel like he runs for a lot of yards every week, but he never scores. Hmm. So I don't know if if Lincoln has to kind of sort that out a little bit because I feel like I, I I saw that last week and I saw that this week. I don't know how it was the weeks before, but you know he has a lot of yardage, but I don't think he's getting a lot of scores. Mm-hmm. That you know just able to maybe it's ten fifteen yard runs, but are is caught by the the secondary um, or something, and then maybe that their offense can't continue that drive and has to settle for a field goal or or something. So okay. Interesting. Well, uh, game two, we saw Tacoma head over to Lexington again. We talked about Lexington uh, in week five, uh, took a big goose egg against Ottawa. This week, they come out having to having totally per- turned that page, it seems, against Tacoma uh, and toppling the Grizzlies. Daniel, I'll start with you. What are your thoughts on how this game might have played out? This one hurts. This <laughs> one actually hurts. Because I can tell you the exact play that caused us to lose focus and go to the other side. Tacoma scores late before half. And then some bomb makes it to the wide receiver while there's a guy covering him and the guy and the defender goes around him instead of tackling, just lets him have a full reign right at the very end of the half. That's when things change the tide. It was actually a pretty even game, uh, stats-wise. There was a... King Jackson had two turnovers, uh, two interceptions. 67 completion percentage, but uh, J.P. Elliott actually struggled a lot this game. Only 16 for 30, so that's a yard per carry of 1.9 only, and that's not going to get you a first down. No, it, it, it is not. That's And, uh, you know, that barely gets, you know, if you need to, if it's third and three, and you're like, yeah, running usually is where you might be, you know, plowing pil- it to the middle um, or something. But if you can't, if you struggle to get the, even two, that's that's tough. Uh, Nicholas, did you have any thoughts on on how this game played out? Anything that caught your eye? Yeah, I mean, similar to Daniel, I was going to say it was pretty close up to the half. I feel like I feel like Tacoma played half a game and Lexington played a full game, so that's kind of why they won. Um, so it's weird, like the score kind of kind of makes it look like a blowout, but it wasn't really because um, by at at the, I, I don't know what the half I don't know what the score was at the half, but I just remember thinking. You know, this is actually like a, a a pretty close game, and then Lexington just came in and kind of blew the doors off in the second half. So, so if they could just keep it up a little bit more, I don't know if maybe they need to up their stamina or or what they're doing. But um, yeah, Lexington had a had a good complete full game. And and now you know again coming from a huge loss to a a pretty decent. Uh, they should feel proud about at least what they did. They you know with thirty points and holding to Tacoma to to the Grizzlies, and then they'll be uh, heading into Madison take on the five and one uh, links uh, on Friday. So that's, that'll be uh, definitely a, uh, a game to, to pay attention to both of them being hungry. One of them fighting for the spot, one of them st- staking their claim at the top there uh, for the most part. That brings us to game number three, Albuquerque and Ottawa or at Ottawa. Um, and this one, you know, I think last week there's some uh, back and forth, you know, this was one that we couldn't really tell which side, who was going to win depending on who, who played the best, I guess. Right. Um, yeah, I, I'll go, I'll start with Nicholas. Tell us a little bit about what you saw in this game, that, how, how it maybe put, played out. Yeah, I thought this was a pretty good game. Um, it's kind of funny. I remember last week I, I said uh, the only way Adams loses is if Ty kind of makes mistakes and he's been, he's done that. And Ty made a point that, you know, he only did that in the first game and he hasn't done that since. And he made a good point and he played really well again. Uh, so Ty is probably one of the top quarterbacks in the league, in my opinion. Uh, but he spread the ball around. It was it was kind of like what Lexington did. Played a full game. Adams are kind of scary because they're facing every every top team that I I consider like an elite team. Like Ottawa, I, I consider you know Lakeman's really efficient. Their running game's really good, and they're just they're beating everybody. So uh, I need someone to go in there and just put a slap in on the Adams. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Like you said, Ty, it seems you know, in watching it and even speaking after the fact with, with Robert Cherry, the, it seemed like Albuquerque knew what what uh, defense that they were running and were able to exploit any gap or any place that what was uh, last week a number one passing defense looked more like lower half, you know, passing defense with 
with very few turnovers after such a hugely successful sixth interception game against Lexington the week prior, which again may have, may have inflated their def- their past defense ranking in that from last week too. So, um, it, yeah, it and then for for purely for purely selfish reasons, if I ever if I stay in the minors for one more season, I really hope Ty's the one that gets drafted. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, I need I need the Adams to take a little bit of a hit if <laughs> for next you, season. You, you need a fresh quarterback to, and yeah. not on your team, but on another team that you're playing. I'm sure you get a lot of interceptions in practice. Will you? Will you? <laughs> you're on you know red uh, red shirting it, whatever that term is, or whatever. Yeah. Um, Daniel, what are your thoughts on how this Albuquerque Ottawa game played out? This one was actually pretty close, pretty good overall. Uh, there was a bit more turnovers. Uh, Lakeman had one extra interception. But I'm gonna I'm gonna showcase the running backs because both played really well, and I know Ottawa lost the game, but this is something that they can really uh, work on into the last few games to make sure they make playoffs. So we'll do Josh Slap first. Twenty five carries, ninety rush yards, two touchdowns. He's been having this is like the third game in a row he's had that's really really good, right? He started with uh, the show off with I think maybe J C Baker or Logan Lee, one of the two premier running backs, and they had their little showcase match. And he really kept it up with him. And he's been really good ever since. So, I mean, this is a guy to watch. And he's, overall stats-wise for drafts, he's actually pretty good stats for your cap. So he might be something to look into for teams that may be worried about the cap going forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Dwayne Simmons, 21 for 118 yards and one touchdown. So, I mean, both of them played outstanding. Uh, the turnovers is probably what really did uh, Ottawa in. But, I mean, this is another game that Ottawa shouldn't. I complain about or hang their hat on. They played really well overall, and we know that the coaching staff and the owners, like some of them, are new revolving doors that they're just picking up and learning, and they're actually showing that they're progressing better and better each week. So, look out for them if they make playoffs. Yeah, I'd agree that uh, in looking at the stats and preparing some of the other slides, um, Ottawa, you know, in general was playing above where they traditionally have, so they've seen a step up. Though they didn't get the points that they needed to, to take over Albuquerque, their defense wasn't quite playing. Ottawa's defense wasn't playing as as well. Um, but, you know, it, it's got to be a little bit hopeful, at least, that their offense is playing well. So if they can get their defense back to where it was, you know, it could mean, you know, winning out these last two games, which is sort of at this point a, a must-do for them. Um, I think anybody in that low, that is not 5-1 and one right now should be seeking those those final two games for sure. Um, so yeah, I, I think that it was a fun game to watch. Um, you know, the, the game was ultimately over by, by the, the end of the third quarter. And, um, there, it was just too tough to, uh, to surmount for, for Ottawa. They may not, not have had enough deep, uh, plays in their playbook to, to really, uh, come back from such a deficit, but, um, yeah, so the game four, we saw Madison head into Annapolis and this one was a, a surprising game. Um, as well, and Annapolis held the lead for you know a couple times for a little while. It was it was uncharacteristics of of, of Madison. I remember seeing in the chat. I think it was uh, Mike Prococo, the head coach for Madison, saying, "Just wait, just wait." I think knowing that his that you know how the fourth quarter might uh, play out, and maybe that was you know kind of intentional, or at least he had a backup plan um, to to be able to come back. Uh, Nicholas, what were your thoughts on how this game uh, went through? Um, I, th- I thought the Navigators could have pulled this one off because, you know, Thumper got injured. Um, I don't know how far into the game, but um, Mitchell came in and he was playing pretty well. So I don't know if there's a contra- <laughs> there's a QB <laughs> controversy over there. But, um, yeah, n- Navigators are kind of scaring me a little bit just because they're out, but they can cut. Co- they're going to – I think they're out of the playoffs, but I think they can cause a, a pretty big disturbance in who's going to make the playoffs. And um, like for an example, we're we're going to be playing them. San Jose is going to be playing this week, and I'm not happy about that um, because they seem to be getting better every week. And I think they're they're sneaky dangerous, even though they're they're probably out of the playoffs. Um, because like I said, they can they can affect the next you know the top top tier of who's getting in. So mm-hmm. and and every so. game, the last two games, especially for Jay Hayden and uh, why am I. Uh, uh... Ibrahim Kareda, uh, Drew Reilly, uh over there uh, coming in underneath uh, Jay Hayden in coaching. I think they've they've started to turn to turn a corner. I think the last two games or so they've they've really come out. They got their first win against Lincoln, and then they held their own against Madison. 
um, for a solid for a while. Um, you know, whether whether Madison was shoestringed, it, M- Mitchell did seem to or their backup quarterback did seem to not be playing terribly um, either. So um, I think that, uh, you know, Jay and, and his team are, are finding what they need to. Uh, and I think the, the, these they'll take these next two games as kind of uh, preseason practice to prepare for next season. Definitely. And like you said, if they can get a couple wins, uh, you know, both for respect and to you know, stick it to those that, <laughs> that, that might be, uh, have a better record. Um, uh, that might be w- what we end up seeing. Yeah. Their, their defense looked really good too. Cause they had, uh, Chandler had three sacks. Um, I don't know how to say the other guy's last name. He had two sacks. So, so, I mean, they were, they were kind of running on all cylinders, which is nice. Nice yeah, to see. Yeah, de- uh, definitely. Daniel, what are your thoughts on uh, any, anything that caught your eye? So normally I don't give the navigators the credit but I'm going to give their defense a full outstanding rewards for this. They're the reason this game was close to begin with. And even though Switch did go out in third, I'm just going to throw his stats out here, and I'm going to say it might have even been better if Switch stayed in the game. Uh, he was 19 for 37, so he's only averaging 50% and 182 yards. He did have the touchdown, but he was sacked three times. So he wasn't playing his best ball. So this is actually, I think, a good plan for people to look at to how to beat Madison going forward. Navigators had a good defensive plan. They got the switch. They got under him. They did injure him. If he wasn't injured, does he play better? Who knows? That's all hypotheticals. We can't do that in this league right now. But uh, the most interesting thing I want to take out of this is Michael Brown, the run back, had five carries for six yards. They almost not used the run at all in that game. Yeah. And, and you know, being uh, just probably, what, three weeks in, four weeks in, um, to that role too, not much beyond, um, you know, and, and switching up uh, being a power back and, and how they might want to use him. Uh, at least he's an extra blocker for blocking against the the quarterback or for the quarterback. So um, that'll be interesting uh, to see what they end up doing, uh, what the game plan is. And I think next week it's, it's going to be probably likely a coaching battle. I think um, to see who, who has the best game plan, who has the defense to take away the other person's game plan uh, kind of thing. So that should be uh, definitely a lot of fun. I think the the links though, they, they have to, I know Brown's relatively new, but they have to get that in there. Cause um, I remember the game where Jay-Z Bacon went down and, and Harmel came in, he's a general player and he ran pretty well. So I think they need to, cause they're at this point, I think they're too one dimensional mm-hmm. and they, they need to get Brown mixed in somewhere. And with, uh, I saw him in the chat, I think, too, Jay Balmer is the, uh, yeah, there he is, Jay Balmer. Uh, he's the fullback there, and he's only a couple weeks in as well. I can see throwing in some, you know, strong fullback dives here or there just to um, give a, the bigger power. Well, I guess he's, they're bo- if one one's a power back, one's a fullback, they're probably the same, they're pretty much the same kind of person. <laughs> uh, just uh, Balmer's are just a little bit slower, perhaps, I'm not sure. But uh, at this moment, they're probably fairly comparable. Um, but anyways, that, that gave us, that's, that is, uh, our excitement are from six, uh, yeah, six o'clock or six 30 until probably 10 30. So solid four hours of, of entertainment last Thursday night. And we've got, uh, more coming up, uh, as well, but I'm curious then let me click over into here, um, that this then changes our standings. So we can see here again, Madison at the, the top, um, with a five and one record alongside uh, Albuquerque, pretty much tied. I think you know this was the order that it gave me in the standings on the website, which I think uses a uh, number of total points that that the team has scored as the tiebreaker. Uh, so uh, you know neck and neck, pretty much. But you can see here the breakdown. Um, so Albuquerque faced off against uh, Ottawa last week, but because Ottawa had such a well a good time running with uh, Salmon's getting 118 yards that you said. Uh, Daniel, that the the defense and the, the uh, Lakeman was passing well, so their defenses went down a little bit. They're in the stats; their rating amongst the other play, other teams uh, went down a little bit. Um, and their pass, their their rushing offense wasn't quite as effective. You said I think he was ninety eight, ninety nine yards or something like that uh, for S- this Mister Slappington. Um, so we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. But again, uh, anything else that you uh, find interesting here? I'd mentioned earlier, you know, Ottawa, their their offense played better than they traditionally have. You can see both of them uh, bumped up in in place compared to the others. 
You know what surprises me about this? Because obviously I'm I'm biased. I'm on San Jose. <laughs> Are you gonna say um, San Jose pass offense? Because that's where I was going. <laughs> I was gonna well, I was gonna say pass D and rush D. Um, I considered us one of the top defenses, which was keeping us in games because I felt like the offense was a little bit lagging, and it doesn't appear that way. Um, it looks like we're kind of actually bottom in the defense, and maybe just Jay Z Bacon is keeping us in games. <laughs> so, and I, I'd have to remind us too that you know. Sure, some of some of the the gaps between some of these teams might might be ten yards per game, but some of them I was looking as I was building this, they were point three difference between them because of like, and some of these jumps was just literally like less than a yard per game difference. So th- this is a very close pack. You know, there's some you know uh, outliers that are both high and or low. Like again, Madison being low on the the offense or rushing offense. You know that is a consistent thing. I think for averaging 29 or 30 yards a game or something like that, uh, much compared to the, the top, uh, uh, JC Bacon there, you know, averaging like 108 yards a game. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just guessing, but quite a difference there. But when you get into the, the middle, they're fighting neck and neck in there, which is an interesting thing to see that one game can have that much effect in, in switching some of these. So Daniel, do you have anything that, that sort of stands out other than that? Right, so I'll just go to Lexington being number one in both pass defense and pass, you know, a uh, rust defense for what they're doing over there on that side. That is phenomenal just to even think about that they're first in both of those categories on the defensive side. And with them getting closer and closer to the playoffs, and right now they're tied for lack of a better term because stats, uh, you know, yeah. differential and stuff like that, but they're tied in theory. Uh, with just what two weeks left to go, yeah, that means they're they're going in the right direction now to make a good push to make playoffs. Mm-hmm. Like you said, you know, add add two W's to any of these and see, you know, seven and one. You know, there it's likely that may, there may be a team that ends seven and one. Um, you know, look at Ottawa and Lexington being at three and three. They they could finish above five hundred. That would be a pretty huge. That would solidify at least maybe probably likely number three or number four spot. Uh, in um, the playoffs and, you know, even looking at Tacoma, they, if by chance their, their strength of victory or other things that might come into it, if they were a 500 team um, and another team loses, even goes one and one um, and, and Tacoma wins out, that changes, that puts them maybe back up in that uh, seeking uh, the, that number four spot. Do you have um? Do you have the full schedule? Has Lexington played Albuquerque yet? I'd have to pull that up on the site. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know see. where. To... I got yes. that kind of open right now. Week seven, they yeah, play Madison. Week eight, uh, they play Navigator. So they already played. Who did Who did Albuquerque lose to? Albuquerque lost to. Let me just go through these real quick. I think it was week one. It might have been. Oh, it was week one, it, and they lost to Madison. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, like, like, I think last week we called Lexington, uh, we called Lexington the the dark horse, and they're just getting better. And if 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 I was thinking of anybody that's going to kind of take on Albuquerque, that that might be a good call. Yeah, I Lexington is like you said is on the way up. Um, Ottawa again, their offense played well, better, um, and if their defense can turn back around to the way that they were previous weeks. Um, they could again. They would be more likely that four, two, five, and one if they when they play well, uh, and if they can get the, everything sort of running on, uh, you know, all, all cylinders kind of thing. Um, looking again, Annapolis just sort of sitting down there. Lincoln maybe again uh, playing slightly better this week than they did previous, uh, better than their average, uh, if you will, um, but still struggling. Annapolis, you know staying in there, giving it all they've gotten. I think they're going to, they, you know, I wouldn't be surprised unless Lincoln changes something big. They might go one and seven, sadly. Um, and Apples, I could see, I'd like to bet that they get one, uh, perhaps one win, but it sounds like they, Annapolis versus Albuquerque is the, the week eight game. Is that what you said? Albuquerque and Annapolis? Uh, Albuquerque and Madison. Oh, it's, it's week one is week eight, right? Uh, I don't know. Yep. Yeah, is it? it is. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's another big. Game. That's a that should be a, the game of the week. That that week, perhaps. I think. Well, if we want to talk about future game of the weeks, Ottawa and San Jose is going to be game of the week because whoever loses that might miss playoffs. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's the other thing too. That it's is 
it, it will take up until the, the end of this next week that um, to know what teams that other teams might need. And those ones might be the game of the week. The one that, that the linchpin, everything else sort of rests on, right? Uh, heading into the playoffs. But anyways. You know, it's also fun to think about. I was thinking it'd be fun to see Annapolis, Annapolis how they would fall out if we did like a 16 game season. I feel like they would they would just slowly be jumping, 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 jumping because they I, I don't once, know they, once, they're one of yeah, my favorite teams now to watch. Once once they find something that's clicking, you know, it's not uncommon that we see that even in the pros that you might have like a, a dip of like three losses in a row. You find out what's you you know you power through it. You find out what's working, what's we're not working. Make that tweak and you get that next win, and then it's like more dominoes falling over and over again. So it seems like maybe they have gotten. You know, these last, though they took the L, they played well last week. So will they play even better this coming week? I'd, yeah, I'd like to think so. I'd like to give, you know, some of these teams the benefit of the doubt, obviously. So um, the other thing to, to call out too, the, again, the the far outliers, we've got Albuquerque and Ottawa both from last week and this week, they're trading places, I think, with with one and two uh, with the turnover difference differential with a positive 11 and a positive 10. After only six weeks or six games, which is, you know, an average of a positive one and a half per game, almost two, two turnovers in your favor per game. Um, you know, I, that might be where, you know, the Ottawa defense was was helping to on that side of things and the offense was not turning the ball over. Similarly, um, looking at this, you know, both San Jose with uh with uh, Blanco at the helm, and then Albuquerque with at with Ty up there, and then even uh, King over on uh, Tacoma with, you know, only uh, going with Lakeman. <laughs> Sorry, there's those four that are uh, pretty low in in turnovers, and I, and those are the majority of them are interceptions versus we don't likely we don't often have fumbles um, in many of the games. So, anyway, something interesting, and then the, the lower two on the complete opposite side, pretty much twenty, yeah. 20 points or 20 turnovers difference between the top and the bottom um, of that, which is pretty, pretty crazy. Anyways. Okay. So we'll, that's the end of, of last week. That's we'll, we'll put a, a, a bow on that. I uh, put on the Christmas tree. That's weird. All right. <laughs> so what next I want to talk about is uh, the big prospect bowl. Um, so again, uh, that happens uh, Thursday in about two weeks uh, from tomorrow. Um, I believe. Uh, December 8th, that'll same place, same ch uh, channel as what you're watching right now, um, only different day. So we'll have our normal uh, scheduled um, Manor League Fights Insights, and then we'll have uh, the, the game the next day. Um, voting will open. Let me go put that out. Daniel, tell us a little bit about, like, you've been involved in the other two. This is the third one that we've run. Um, tell us a little bit about what makes this exciting and fun or what you've what your experience has been with it. Yeah, certainly. So first of all, uh, this technically has nothing to do with the SFL. This is something Axel's doing on his off time while he can. This is something we thought would be fun to give the experience of the pros to the minor league. So we have all, the all-star game in the pros themselves. So it's fun just to have people come together, people play, and people, you know, just watch you know, what dream matches they could have on the field, right? Different quarterbacks with different wide receivers would mix a match. It was all that kind of fun. Um, the way this usually works is that uh, instead of in the pros where they get picked, uh, you guys, because we want to give it back to the community, will vote yourselves on who deserving of the spot. You can pick whoever you want. It could be biased or non-biased. It's whatever you want in the process. It's your decision at the end of the day. Uh, we're going to try and limit it, I believe this time, Axel, to uh, not two-way players. That nope. way all the new players get a chance to get into the zone and get that into is, the replay. That is not case oh, no we're having two-way players no, they're, they're listed in there i i just have labels in there sharing which oh, ones are two -way, okay um so that people can know label last um week. yeah or last season i mean yeah. if if again this is all all you you vote so if, if people get upset that they're in there well don't you don't vote for them do what you want you know advocate for your your case make your case to others but i don't want to exclude anybody if you're on a sflm team your your name should appear in there as of Earlier or last night and earlier, uh, new people coming in. Uh, you sadly won't be able to be part of it, but uh, those that have been here since through week six, let's go rocket. Um, and yeah, go out there and make your case. You get to pick pick your favorite player. For some of them, have eight or nine players to pick from, uh, like uh, cornerbacks and wide receivers. 
Um, you can see this, the four teams difference between uh, the West and the East, which is opposite of me. So West and East, there we go. Um, yeah. So uh, like Nicholas, he's on uh, the fight. So he'd be representing West side. I yeah. really failed. I, if I remember correctly, it's one on one, right? Both sides has one, one. Yes. It, the one, uh, let's see. I, I think believe, West uh, lost and then East won. We we'll have to go yeah, back. Yeah, I think West lost the first season because I think Reno was in the All Star game and lost that. Yeah, I think that's what and, was what I was remembering too. Yeah, because he was in uh, he was live with us. He was actually uh, talking with us when he yep. could. So that was actually nice. Uh, and then uh, last year, uh, strong uh, not strong bush, <laughs> strong square bush was out there plowing people over for the East, and that really took over for them um, to win the game. Um, and fun enough, I've asked. Uh, uh, Madison's head coach to put together again how this usually works is there's no official like coach preparing different game plans to counteract the other game plans I've asked him to put together a game plan or a playbook for both offense and defense that both teams are going to use and are is he's going to make it to have some really exciting action and activity in there uh and then I'll be putting replacing people so that you know Nicholas, you being a, if you're selected as a Pro Bowl member for cornerbacks, if you're in there, um, I might put you in, you know, at, in four three and three three nickel. But for nickel and dime, it might be another player. So that other people, you know, so I might be picking four cornerbacks for each team and then swapping it out two quarter two two quarterbacks. So it'll be split time, uh, much like you might see in the the not so fun league. Um, uh, Pro Bowl that they have usually uh, around the the bowl that is extra super, um, so, anyways, that should be a lot of fun. The go out there vote. Uh, let me know if there are issues. Uh, the forms out there in uh, SFL and Gen Chat in our fi- minor league fights and insights general chat and Gen Chat over in SFL too. Um, and I think Swole will be say, uh, sending out in Twitch or Twitter, Twitterverse, uh, doing all that social media stuff that he does, which is awesome. Thank you. Uh, but get the word out, advocate for your vote, you know, you know, go, go out there, shake hands, kiss babies, walk in parades, whatever you need to do to get, to get votes in there. Uh, and yeah, the most, the biggest thing of all is to remember guys, this is all for fun at the end of the day. We're here to have fun. That's the main thing about all this. Oh, cool. And, and uh, Axel and anybody <clears throat> who who's worked on this uh, if, on behalf of the minor leaguers, thank you. Just because, you know, it's obviously with with minor leaguers. I would say our excitement is probably even more than people that are in the SFL, just because we're new. It's fresh, so to to have like an all star game for uh, you know the minor leagues is is really fun for a lot of us because you know we're we're just having fun trying to show off. Where you know if we didn't have that, it wouldn't be as fun. So this just adds another layer of fun to it. So so sure. thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, that's what it's there for. Is I'm glad that it's being received well. Historically, I've gotten really good feedback. People have been excited. Um, if the worst thing that you're that people are really the only thing that people are upset about is the two way contract stuff that had happened. Like people were like, "Oh, that should be not on there." I'm like, "You know what? You guys can make that decision." Um, but anyway, if that's the the worst thing that's happened, and everybody that's been that been selected uh, is excited, those that have not has like, "Yes, congratulate those that have been." Um, and it it's going to be a live out myself will be commentating. I don't know if Daniel, I think you're, you might be available. Maybe. Uh, I will double check because okay. finals is kind of in that weird spot, but my finals because of a uh, program and it's not usually said I have to do this in a day. I got several days to do it gotcha. generally. So I should more than likely be able to. <laughs> cool. And, and Mickey uh, Melillo from, uh, you know, some of uh, your broadcasting, uh, he's been broadcasting some of the minor league games uh, so far this season. Um, he'll be joining us as well. Um, we can see if we can either get Derek or Reno or someone else uh, and, and or Nicholas, if you'd like to join us, uh, we might even have a little bit of a, a halftime show where we jump in a, a voice chat and talk with, with people watching uh, their players out there uh, and seeing what that's like. If you'd love to have something like that happen, uh, make sure you're there um, and mm-hmm. let us know. He's a resident. He's going to be there at this point. He lives here with me at this point. We're the Boston bros. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Cool. Well, that should be a lot of excitement. Uh, so again, form is out there. Do your voting, uh, make your choices um, and voting. I'll close it down uh, at the end of the day, midnight CST central time uh, next Friday. So you have a, a week and a day and tonight go vote plenty of time to, to maybe get your grandma to get in there and 
and vote for you. What's this? Sunny? Right, just <clears throat> just before everybody votes, um, I'm a minor leaguer. I'm a fresh minor leaguer. I'm fine with two-way players being in there. They're in the minor leagues. They're playing on our teams. They're making plays to help our teams win. So if I see a, a two-way player that is that I feel is a step above a, a non-two-way player, I'm voting for the two-way player. So just before everybody votes, that's that's kind of like my mindset. So just uh, maybe that's that's yours. Maybe it's not, but I think it's fine. They're in there. Yeah, and that's that's one reason I didn't want to like again. They're they're putting in the, that effort. They're they're progressing, or no, they don't. They they're still out there every game. Um, many of them are are those starters, but again, they're they're two way because they don't they're not starters out in the pros, and so they don't get much playing time. Uh, for example, uh, Tacoma's Tiga Clay is on the uh, the legend with us uh, as a six D, uh, dime defensive back, and it it's a great day when when. Uh, in the pros, when uh, Tiga got one tackle in the game, oftentimes maybe it's double zeros with zero and zero assists. Uh, maybe it's a one assist, zero tackles. So they don't get a lot of playing time. That's exactly the reason that these two ways exist to be able to show off their expertise and their growth. Tiga's been growing, you know, all the season, all regular season for uh, the pros uh, on our team, uh, making progressions every week. Uh, they stopped, but they are still out there on the field with you all. Uh, trying to make an, their own name and potentially, you know, Tiga finds a better opportunity where he uh, Tiga could be, you know, number four back, you know, uh, out there, uh, CB2 or something like that. So uh, just out there making gains and, and having fun playing the games. Ra- Raccoon actually makes a good point in chat. Um, I think it's because we just recently went through the a couple expansions. So, you know, there's probably not you know, cornerbacks hanging around that have been there for four years. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, it's not as intrusive as it used to be. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, it, it, it's exciting to see that they're getting spots out there. And I, again, um, if, if you have the opportunity, you know, it, I, that's not a bad, a bad deal. Feel free to talk to other two ways about what their experience is like too. Um, but yeah, coming up to the draft, that is likely to be an option for uh, players, you know, that are in, there's a, again, a a certain set of, I think five or something, you know, uh, lower, less than 50% play time or some level like that, that it's, you know, uh, tight end two, wide receiver four, um, CB three or four, uh, that kind of thing. So anyways, but big, just go vote, go ahead, go, go make your stamp out there. Um, let us know who, uh, who you like, uh, the first year we did it, we had 99 votes, um, which is great. You know, I think if, if you think the the minor league is made up of today now, like 113, 120, something like that, minor league players, we should be able to bust that out of the water. Second year came in at 106 votes. So can we beat 106 votes? I want this thing to be big. Go out there and get the pros to vote. There's 700 players out there, almost 700 players that could be your voting partners uh, and or potential GMs, owners that you could be mingling with. Uh, and just getting your name out there and having fun. They come, come and see me. Here's my business card. I'll show you what I can do out on the field come uh, December 8th. So, cool. Anyways, have fun with that. Let's see. We've got some four games coming up here. Um, we'll start with Albuquerque coming in, going west to uh, Tacoma to take on the Grizzlies. Um, this should be an interesting, you know, uh, Tacoma, I can certainly say, has heart, and they're not afraid to share that, hey, we have heart. <laughs> they seem more vocal this year than they have in, in past years, which is interesting. Um, Daniel, I'll go start with you. What are your thoughts on how this game might play out? Ty comes back to Tacoma, and Ty is going to obliterate Tacoma, unfortunately. <laughs> Ty is really good right now, and D- Josh Laff has been on fire the last three games. I can imagine it being a fourth game that he's going to come in and just terrorize. Because uh, I believe Tacoma has let one of their worst rushing defenses, I do believe, if I remember correctly. So uh, Slap himself is just going to run right through them, I think. Very cool. And and Nicholas, what are your thoughts on, do you agree? agree? Do you have any new extra nuance to add of what your opinion is? I mean, it's pretty similar. I mean, they, they might have the best quarterback and they might have the best running back, the Adams. Um, so it's going to be a tough game for King and Elliott. Um, Elliott probably has to run a lot more. Um, and King, I mean, King, King made some bad plays last game, but they were more in the second quarter. So if he could, you know, kind of just go back to his normal self, he could have a, another great game. So 
I mean, it's out. It's Albuquerque now. Uh, with with Daniel, I, uh, I'm Pat's fan. I never understood why people hated us just because we won. I kind of don't like the Adams anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I'm rooting for Tacoma. The under under underdog. Oh, um, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to look at this and and think that Tacoma, you know, has a huge chance. You know, again, they'd have to be playing really well, and and we know that they they can. You know, if things are going well, if they've got the right plays into their playbook uh, in comparison to the defense that uh, the Adams might be showing um, and their defense is, is pretty stacked. They have a pretty good uh, the Grizzlies have a pretty good uh, defensive back area. Um, uh, two two ways, you know, we've got Angel Maldonado, Maldonado and uh, to get clay back there uh, and, and they've got a tackle um, again. Like you said, it, this might hinge mostly on can J.B. Elliott provide balance to their game, which I think is when they've done well, when they can a little bit of ebb and flow back and forth, rush and pass, rush and pass. Um, but this is Adam's game to lose. This is, you know, it's, this is the one that can they keep this, this snowball rolling. So cool. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I have to click the other button. There we go. All right. So that brings us to then our second game of the week or not game of the week game the, on Friday game this week. Uh, is Annapolis at uh, San Jose traveling east as well? Uh, long flight over ac- across the entire U.S. to get over to San Jose. Um, let's see. I'll start with you, Daniel. Tell us a little bit about how you think this game might play out. Is there any standouts? Do you think Gene Struthers might play well this game, or do you think Blanco and Bacon have have uh, the Navigators cooked? So we just saw the Navigators play really good defense against the Lynx. And I think this is probably why San Jose's might be fearing is that the Navigators feel so good about their game last week that the defense comes and brings it again. Because we've seen the Navigators can hold strong offenses together if they want to. It's just their offense themselves can't seem to catch up in the games and get their points when they need to, even though Gene Struthers had an immaculate game two weeks ago to get their first win. Uh, If the Navigators' defense can keep it close, this could be a sneaky game where the Navigators could sneak a win. But obviously San Jose is going to be favored to start. They're the better team so far this season. But it could go either way in my books. I think this is going to be an excellent game. And do you think, uh, Nicholas, do you think you'll be able to pull it off? Like, I Are you hoping to get your first interception? Is that right? It would be nice. I haven't been up on my catch, so I just I just want to knock balls down. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Playing volleyball out there, that's fine. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this is going to be a tough game. Like I said, I, I've become a fan of Annapolis, so they've been getting better each week. Um, I think the key to the game for Annapolis would be Grant Jr. Because I feel like I feel like San Jose kind of has been stumbling a little bit with defending the run, but Grant hasn't been running very well, so. I think the key is to kind of give Grant the ball and let him get his legs under him. And if, if they can do that, they probably have a shot of keeping it close uh, with us and um, possibly eke it out a win. And Daniel, I remember now the, the fir- I think the first touchdown we got last week was a muffed punt and then we ran in for a touchdown. So that's probably like, if we didn't have that, we, we might not even have won against that. that uh, I, yeah. Not even mention, I also mentioned, I also remember the missed field goal that should have been a shoe in at the very yeah. end of the game to tie to go to overtime. Yeah, so I, I feel like San Jose made it. Uh, we might have been playing a little bit above ourselves, and we came down a little, a little bit down to earth, but we have great coaching, so so I'm pretty confident that we can beat Annapolis, but Annapolis, if they can get the running game going, I, I think they have a shot. Very cool. I love your open-mindedness and unbiasedness <laughs> of you presenting. That's good. Um, yeah, I'm. it's, it's tough. It's time for Gene Struthers to have a good game. You know, I'm I'm excited when we've talked. You know, even since we were we were pre- previewing the, the teams, um, I believe Chris Grant Jr. was one that's consistently coming up. Is like it, his day is going to come sometime. Um, and with the two of them out there, you know, Ronnie Shanahan had a couple of nice uh, catches, or uh, and one of them was into the end zone too for that one of their uh, their one touchdown, I believe, uh, in the last game Annapolis against uh, Madison. Um, so it shows that they can do the, do it that, you know, they've got some of the, the talent there. It's just, you know, somehow getting it all to work in the same direction at the same time kind of thing. Um, should definitely be a fun game to watch. Uh, that brings us then to number three, uh, that shows Lexington is coming into Madison to take on the links. Uh, the miners hot off their, 
their big win last week, uh, right after their big loss the week before. Um, they've been showing, like you said, we we're looking at the. I'll pull that up again. Um, this that that standings. You know, Lincoln is on the rise, and that, you know, was that that big goose egg was simply a a fluke kind of thing, or and is what we saw last week. Yeah, last yeah last week, uh, more of what the, akin to what they're used to doing. Uh, I'll say, Daniel, what are your thoughts on on how this game might play out? Well, let's keep it uh, keep, uh, move back to the breakdown because sure. I'm actually going to use the breakdown absolutely to, to show off uh, the skills here. Uh, Lex and Miners are two number two in pass offense, and uh, we already mentioned their defenses already. But if you look at Madison, it's almost similar the way they play. Right, they're first in the pass offense versus the second. Pass defense is third versus first. Rust defense is second versus first. The only outlier here is the Rust offense, and both of them are not the best in that field. So these teams are actually stacked pretty well together as it is. Mm -hmm. So I think this might actually be game of the week, and it could go either way, depending on whose defense was played better in the end. So it could either be like very low scoring, defense heavy, defense controlling the game, or if I think defense this is, is... going to be a. De I think this is going to be a defense controlling the game. Okay, or or else I was going to say. Defensive didn't seem to know that there was a game today and offense is going aces through the air. Um, you never know, <laughs> depending on how things go. Um, well, Nicholas, what are your thoughts on on the Lexington Madison game? Yeah, I feel like, like first off, you kind of just want to pick Madison because they got Thumper, Wonder, Haynes. I mean, those are great receivers, those are great, that's a great thrower, but they just they're. They're one dimensional. Can you plan against that? Um, and Lexington, I think, can. They, they're one of the few teams that can actually plan and, and play against that. So, like I said, if, if they don't get Michael Brown going, they, they got to get him going or, or Jay Bomber, um, get some of the runs going. So, I mean, it's kind of like with, with Bledsoe in the NFL. Like, like I remember Drew Bledsoe, he threw like 90 times a game. So, no matter how good Drew Bledsoe was, he was going to throw some interceptions. He was going to you know, make mistakes because they know he's throwing. Um, so they, they got to find a way to mix in Brown, which I have no confidence they can because they haven't. Um, so I would give the the nod to actually Lexington this week. Uh, I just, do you think it's uh, going to be a Chad Moore show, Sean Sanders? Do you think a nice balance? Or do you think it's the Yeah, defense? I think it'll be a balanced game. I don't think anyone on Lexington is is the the, the top tier. So mm -hmm. I think they kind of play as a team. Which is why, when when we look at that stat sheet that you give, it, it's kind of like they're well rounded. So I, I think it's kind of just everyone's going to be playing their game, and if they do good, they can, uh, they should be able to kind of rein in uh, Madison, in my opinion. Cool. All right, that leaves us then with number four. Uh, last game we see Ottawa. Um, again, it's hot and cold. So the season sort of so far. I uh, will see what temperature they're running as they head uh, into Lincoln, Nebraska, to take on the Rattlesnakes. Um, see, Daniel, we'll start with you. What are your thoughts on how this game might play out? Do you have a, a favorite of, you know, is an offense or defense going to take over or what? Well, we've been seeing that the Rattlesnakes offense has been good running the ball, but their uh, air attack has not been the best, I want to say. They've been good at times. Still, once again, last week, complete mystery. Thank you for uh, sharing some of that muffled punt uh, scenarios with the Lincoln Rattlesnakes. Uh, but, like, they should be better on paper. We keep saying this, right? They they should be better on paper, just the way their offense is settled with the quarterback and the running back. And Link, Logan Lee has been going. He's been doing good now. Uh, but Kenny Slaughter is still struggling, it seems, now and again. He's having these struggles. So I'm actually going to lean Ottawa's way. And I think for Ottawa, this is a game that they need to win because this is a team that they should beat going forward if we go by stat. Just as of right now. And Nicholas, your thoughts on how this game might play out? Yeah, I'm leaning towards Ottawa also. Um, I mean, they have a pretty well-rounded team. Uh, Lakeman is, is, as always, pretty effective. Um, he's not like the most high-flying quarterback, but he just does what he needs to do. Um, and for Lincoln, I feel like everything kind of should run through Logan Lee, but he just doesn't score. So I don't know how they're going to score <laughs> if Logan Lee doesn't get into the end zone. So. Again, I, I don't see any huge names on Ottawa. Like, I'm not, you know, you don't see like a Prince Wonder. You don't see a, any huge flying names, but I just think they just play efficient. Um, so I think they kind of eke this out because I just, I don't, I don't know what Lincoln's identity really is. 
Um, so I, I'm leaning towards Ottawa. Gotcha. And yeah, I mean, looking at this, you know, early on, we touted Lincoln, their offense on paper looks really good. Their defense had some holes in it and it still is young. You know, the, that defensive back core group, uh, the linebacker group, very young. Um, Luke Swift heading that up, you know, but that's, uh, you know, the soul bronze back there ultimately. Um, but looking at uh, Ottawa, their defense is pretty stacked. I feel like they could, they may be the ones to, to stifle Logan Lee and, and slider here. And, and if the offense, which is growing is getting better on Ottawa, if they can come out against maybe this, this lighter, uh, more lax, uh, I would say lax, but, uh, I did say lax. We'll say lax uh, defense of, of Lincoln. Um, you know, could, could that be spell another uh, offensive success for the cavalry this coming week? Should be an interesting game. Again, Lincoln with everything to lose if they haven't lost it all already. I'm not sure they, there's two more games. They'd end up three and five. I think, yeah, both, both Lincoln and Annapolis again, I think statistically should be, I don't know if they're have it's been shared. I don't know if, if anybody said anything about official eliminations, but um, I'm like, I'd like to think I'd, I would think that that would be the case for one and five. Anyways, that's, those are our, our four games that we have to look forward to on Friday. Um, I know a lot of you are, uh, you know, with family tomorrow. Um, for those of you that had the week off this week or some days, that's awesome. Sometimes your kids do too. I'm, I'm, I hope you got, you got some, uh, a chance to, uh, spend some time there, but then yeah, I'm excited to you know for myself. I'll be heading to the in-laws on Thursday, uh, my own family uh, on Friday, and then looking to, forward to doing some gaming with some fellow SFL SFL friends and things. So, um, Daniel, G, I'm I'm uh, hey since it's Thanksgiving, I'm just gonna say something that I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for the league, um, just the opportunity the people in the league, um, regardless of title and name and team or whatever, you all help. Uh, have been there for me, uh, for myself and things. So I appreciate everybody uh, being friends and things. So uh, Daniel, do you have anything that you're thankful for? Um, and then I'll go to, to Nicholas too. Sure. Uh, I'm just going to, I guess, piggyback a little bit because the biggest thing I'm thankful for when it comes to with the SFL or in general is the friends that we made along the way while doing this. Like we wouldn't have the group that we have now if we never did minor league fights and insights at the very beginning or even thought of it as an idea when we were just getting drafted we're like let's bring back let's give something back to this uh to the minor leagues like the way that we wanted to because we know how important it is for people to have a good experience starting off to get to their pros to keep their longevity to keep having fun to keep you know keeping those connections so i'm just thankful for all the people that we had that we had to interview that we made friends with and we had some very memorable interviews continuing this year to last year even to our first year or first season uh, so uh, it's been very good. I'm just I'm just grateful for all the people that are coming on and all the friends we make. Excellent. And Nicholas, what are you thankful for? Yeah, I'd kind of almost flip that around. So SFL wise, I'm I'm pretty thankful for the for the myriad of shows. So there's you know Ashley show, there's this show, there's Gage. So it's just nice to have because I feel like when I came into the league, I came in at a really nice time where the SFL was going, and then we were leading into the SFLM. So there were so many things to watch and I was catching up on old games where now we're kind of in like almost like a little bit of a lull where it's, you know, there's only a game one day a week. So it's, it's nice to have these shows kind of sprinkled in between that we can kind of watch to get our little fix of, of some SFL <laughs> information. So I kind of flip it around. I, I really enjoy these shows and, and I, I kind of stuck with this one obviously, but I, you know, I liked being on Ashley's show. She was really nice. And um, I've seen some engages show. They're really good. So it's some good quality work out there. So. Well, good. I'm. I'm. That's great to hear that. Uh, even one person makes it worth worth doing this kind of thing. Again, speaking for Eddie and, and Ashley and and things. Um, you know, it's it's uh it's a fun thing to do. It 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 scratches a little bit of an itch. Uh, you know, helping. It's tough. It's you know, I'm not gonna lie. There's there was after season one, there was a point that I'm like, I don't know if I want to do a season two. Um, you know, season one I think was 15 shows. So every Wednesday night, you know, it's like a a four or five hour block of my day and like hours of preparing graphics and things like that it's but it makes it all worth it even if if one person says hey i really enjoy you know what you're doing if if it was only one person i'd probably just like you know have voice chat and share my screen or something but then this but anyways uh it's it's fun nonetheless um and really appreciate that nicholas and and daniel i 
you know, again, uh, we met April of 2021. Um, you know, week two of season three of SFLM joined in this, you know, locker room. Um, then we got drafted to different teams. We were there at different places for a couple of years, but we never lost sight of who, you know, who our friends are. And so even if, if your friends are not on your same team, your locker, your friends that you're developing are not on your locker uh, room in the future pro uh, team, don't worry, you know, stay, stay connected. There's, you know, uh, e- yeah, just DM it. Yeah, it's a funny story with that. I've just bugged about DMs. When we all got dropped to other places, the the Tacoma gang, the Grizzly gang that we were, I made sure to reach out and DM every new, every Tacoma player that was on a different team sometime during the weeks or throughout the weeks to make sure they were doing great, how they were doing, if they were enjoying them, and just kept in touch because the minor league uh, friendship, the families we make in the minor leagues, that's something that you should keep throughout, even in the pros. That's something that you should have that's a good foundation to keep going throughout your career here. Yep. You'll talk to many pros that even from season one, um, there's, there's like the, the pre SFLM pro leaguers, and then there's the post SFLM pro leaguers. And, you know, the pre will talk about like the one game that they got to, sh- to play to like show off their talent where the post is like, yep, I grew up. I'm, you know, I was a rattlesnake or I was a, a Birmingham fuel uh, and you've got your connections and you've got like your identity of like much like college, right. You know, where you, how you come up kind of thing in the, in, in the league, uh, it does definitely comes, uh, comes to you or stays with you. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, anyways, so I'm thankful for all the viewers. Thank you for, for joining us for this little over an hour show. Um, all the support you guys, uh, offer, you know, Nicholas, you're talking about, we've got a lot of things that are coming up as well. Um, so, uh, there should be, I think, typically on Monday, there might be a free agent show. I know oftentimes um, Cam has a show when free agency starts for the pros uh, that sometimes lasts like five hours, six hours from when they open it, I think at noon or 1 p.m. on Monday. And it goes until like six in the afternoon. So lots of things, lots of interviews with people and, and seeing some of the shifts moving or people moving and the shifting uh, should be a lot of fun. <coughs> Sorry, I, I didn't notice. I just switched over from a, a different view that doesn't have chat. So um, anyways, uh, so that that's something that's coming up. Uh, we've got the voting. Voting will close next Friday uh, for the SFLM uh, Prospect Bowl. And then the Prospect Bowl itself is on the 8th. I want to say soon. We'll, we'll, we'll be having a, a scheduled release show. I think that's on November 30th. So uh, next Wednesday, perhaps I might need to shift my time and or day just based on, on when can, uh, when that show is going to be on Wednesday. Um, and then after that, there's the, an all-star game coming up and then the draft is on the 17th and 18th. There's the championship and all of your games, you know, the, the minor league games, the, the semis and the, the championship on the 16th. But, uh, in the next, what, three weeks, there should be some nice fun things coming up. So after a stretch of, like you said, you know, a month and a half or so since, you know, lots of games were happening, but they'll be, it, it'll be nonstop pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, stay tuned for um, uh, other stuff. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's late. Anyways, I thank you all. Uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the games uh, come Friday. So uh, Daniel, any final words? Well, just vote, guys. Uh, It's as simple as that. Vote for who you guys want to see in the All-Star game. All right. Nicholas, any final words? Yeah. I mean, even if you're not from America, uh, eat turkey. It's really good. All right. Well, we'll see you guys later. Good night. See ya.